one day that had 5,000 Haitian migrants underneath the bridge. All it takes is like one photo like that being released by Fox News for America to start being like, wait, is this actually a problem? But for the most part, they know exactly what to do to just keep it looking civil, and then they just don't have to answer to it. They don't have to go. Well, yeah, they'll fluff fail, all failure. the numbers to make them look good, right? They just got exposed for the crime numbers. Yes. The that was crazy. That, is, that should be a crime. Okay, guys, here with Liz Willis. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thanks we're for at, having me. Yeah, we're Excited. at the Heritage Foundation. It's been a fun event. It's been fun so far, and I get to meet people like you. So yeah, I'll I'm say that. <laughs> that director of uh, the ICE was, I'll never forget that talk. Yeah, that was that was deep, but he's a great man. I've heard him speak at a few rallies before and then online as well, but yeah, no. Yeah, because people don't actually, like some people, I mean, we're on media and stuff, but some people don't know what's actually going on at the border. No, and I can't imagine having to live through what he's done for the past 30 years. I mean, he talks about actually having to go and get like actual mental health as a grown man. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hear that often, but to think of the heinous, horrendous things he's witnessed, it kind of, it paints a picture of the truth about what's going on there and how much the Biden administration's really been hiding from right. us. Right. Yeah, he's on the front lines and he's saying the Biden administration is fully aware of it. That's the scary part to me because there were like rumors of that. But when you yeah. hear that from someone that's actually there, that's pretty eye opening. Yeah, it's disturbing. Super disturbing. I mean, he said under Trump, the border was the tightest it's ever been, right? The tightest it's ever been. And then he was saying, you know, and you, you get statistics, you get numbers, they go back and forth. They're saying, oh, it's lower now. Well, it's lower right now because they are trying to process them and release them as fast as possible because you think about what you actually see in the news. And that's exactly what the current admin's trying to avoid, which is that one day that had 5,000 Haitian migrants underneath the bridge. All it takes is like, one photo like that being released by Fox News for America to start being like, wait, is this actually a problem? But for the most part, they know exactly what to do to just keep it looking civil. Yeah. And then they just don't have to answer to it. They don't have to go. Kamala's visited what maybe once mm -hmm. to the southern border as the border star. <laughs> so well, yeah, they'll fluff fail, all failure. the numbers to make them look good, right? They just got exposed for the crime numbers. Yes, the, that was crazy. That, is that, that should be a crime. That should be like, more. That every news somebody should be, covering should be that. arrested, and yeah. it is just so under the radar. I mean, they're like, oh, crime's not so bad, our and our economy's not so bad. All these things, it's not so bad. Well, not if you're lying about the data. If I didn't have control. X, I wouldn't have seen it. No, hundred percent, no. Same. I saw it on X. Yeah, which is crazy. If Elon didn't buy X, think about how many things we wouldn't know. I could talk about that all day. <laughs> I'm Elon's number one fan. Yeah, he's he honestly saved social media, he's in my opinion. Saved social media. He saved America. I think if we win this election, and not to discredit anyone else that's worked hard in the campaign, that's worked hard, but and by we, I mean the Trump campaign. A lot of thanks goes to Elon Musk and yeah. what he's doing. Shout out to Elon. And he's speaking in, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I saw earlier today, he said he's scheduled for like six speeches, but he plans on doing 12. Like, I yeah. love that. That's just him. That man, like he gets up, he goes to work every day. He's a billionaire. He doesn't mm -hmm. have to do that, but he's out there trying to save the country. That's just him caring. Because I can't remember any elections where non- like political people were out there doing speeches like this. No, <laughs> billionaires like him. Yeah, billionaires. Dark MAGA, baby. <laughs> and you see even all these liberal podcasts starting to have Trump on and like people changing their opinions in real time, like oh, the All In podcast. We're getting, I think, Joe Rogan soon too. Rogan, and I And not that he's a liberal, but you know, it's he wasn't originally going to have him on. So. He had a very hard stance against him yeah. years ago. Yeah. But I think the tide is changing. I, I think the truth is coming out. I agree. And I think we've also just seen the worst. You know, as far as America goes, I know other countries have it a lot worse, but it's woke people up to what some of these liberal policies will actually do to yeah. you and your family, your safety, security, your pocketbook. So have you always been conservative? Yeah, I've always been conservative. Oh, nice. I grew up I, liberal. That's why I asked. Ooh, a lot of people. Spicy. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people that grew up liberal are now are now turning. There's a whole walk away movement. I remember like learning about that in 2020. I definitely questioned my politics um around 2020 and i was working in politics too so but i remember i mean i was like really young reading about george bush for fun so i <laughs> had a problem then sounds fun <laughs> um, i know i know but um yeah there's a lot of people turning a lot of people that kind of woke up especially with biden like yeah. watching him literally decay on stage <laughs> at the presidential debate i shouldn't be laughing i, I, <laughs> I, I got text messages from my most liberal friends and they were like I think I'm voting for Trump. Yeah. I like screenshot it. I'm like, I never thought I would see this day. So pretty crazy, right? People in LA, people in like liberal cities are saying that. 
Yeah. It's nuts. And the Kalshi odds, it's almost 60-40 right now. Kalshi odds, those are crazy. I was talking about it on another podcast. I think it's super exciting that we actually even have a betting online betting platform like Kalshi. What they're doing is pretty unique for anyone that doesn't know, but you can actually bet like online with your own money mm -hmm. legally in the United States on what you predict the outcome of the election to be. And it was like, they just really started their election market like maybe two weeks ago, yeah. something like that, give or take. And it was tied, like it was pretty 50-50 for the most part. And within the past few days, they've gotten massive amounts of money. I think I've seen like $100,000, $250,000. And these are like singular bets that people are placing. And mm -hmm. and there's quite a it. I range. saw it hit 62 today. I think it's back down to 60 right now. But every interview she goes on, it's getting worse. <laughs> that makes sense. It's crazy. I just don't want people to get too comfortable, you know, when they see right. odds like that. Um, but I think I... I hope, I don't want to be naive, I hope that, you know, that is the reality of this election. And it's going to be interesting to see is an online prediction market, you know, as safe as watching like a traditional poll. Like right. is, how is how are those going to differ? Yeah, I wonder are they how, going to be more accurate? I wonder how it'll differ because I don't trust most polls, I'd say. I don't either. I mean, you saw like the past few elections, Hillary Clinton was predicted to win by a lot. Yeah. And then Biden was predicted to win by 17. Trump had like no shot in 2016. Yeah. Boom. So that's that's your traditional polls. But now we've got this and people are able to put their own money into this. And I'm excited for it. Oh, I'm yeah. excited to see the outcome. Are you worried about election integrity? I am. I do have <laughs> I do have some concerns about election integrity. And I know it's gone back and forth between, you know, since the 2020 election, I went to a lot of the hearings even out in um was arizona they had a lot of them but yeah. i'm from atlanta georgia so fulton county had its own mess of problems we had boxes that were just unaccounted for that of uh, ballots that were pushed under tables we had a water main break at the fulton county which is like the largest that. center for voting in atlanta georgia so for me to say uh, there were no issues at all I think I think that's crap. I think there are a lot of issues. I know personally people that have stories. And then when I tried to vote in the midterms, I actually my ballot got rejected three times. What? Yeah. And they were like, I don't know what's wrong. And then finally they're just like, All right, it's good. You're good. I'm like, I don't I don't feel like that was that's good. That's so weird. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I can't believe they're doing mail ins again. Yeah. You could easily rig those. Second of all, did you see the guy that went on PBD's podcast with the voting machine? No. Is this so recent? He, Is it Yeah, Canadian? like a month ago. He went on with a voting machine that you go and vote on, and he easily just changed the answers. I mean, I, like, don't, I believe like that. Yeah, I went to Mike Lindell's cyber symposium, and we there were actually two of them, and he brought in experts from all around the world, and they were able to hack and prove that it actually these systems can connect to Wi-Fi, that mm -hmm. you can access them, you know, without having to physically connect to them, and that those should not that should be that should not happen. And like, that that's worries not me. supposed to happen. And they no. were just able to sign in and do what they wanted. Like, if you think that China or Russia, whatever, even, you know, whoever, if, if we can do it, like just random tech people in the US and you think other countries aren't trying to get into that, then I think you're the conspiracy theorist. Yeah, that worries me because with these swing states, like your state and my state, Nevada, you only need 10, 20, 30,000 votes. You're Nevada. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, we're, we got a swing state. We voted Biden last election. Huh. I know. And I was out there campaigning really hard. And I saw, um, well, I worked for a news network. And so we covered all of the rallies and mm -hmm. we would go. And I remember specifically Nevada because there would be 20,000 people waiting in a hundred degree heat just to go inside and see Trump. And they called it a purple state, but it didn't look purple to me. No. I mean, the massive amounts of Trump supporters out there and then the elections came in and I was like, Oh. I'll say this about Nevada being there for four years. I've never met a Biden supporter or a Kamala supporter, and I've met thousands of people there. Same. So, I just don't get it. So you yeah, maybe they're a... like on the outskirts. I don't know. But the people I deal with out there, no support for them. I hear you. I don't get it. That's why I still question 2020. Yeah. I mean, we should be. I mean, there's a lot of compelling evidence on it. Yeah. Like there's documentaries about it and yeah. people, no legal action was taken. So you agree? Do you think that it yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, this might go on YouTube, so I got to be careful with uh, what I say. But all you, For YouTube, all you have to do is uh, like fact check me and be like, okay. are you sure about that? Cause that's so are you sure about that? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're good now. You, you followed the terms and conditions. Nice. But two years ago, you couldn't even say no, it at all. No. And the V word. 
I was going to say that too. Yeah, but... I got a strike for that. <laughs> I almost got my whole YouTube deleted. I actually did get oh wow an entire channel, a massive channel deleted. Damn, just from the B word? Yeah, I was talking to Mike Lindell. Whoa. And he mentioned it. And then the whole channel got taken down and it was awful. And everyone was like, Liz was trying to silence Mike Lindell. I was like, no, I was trying to save our network because I know these commies are going to take this video down. And they did. So crazy because you need three strikes on YouTube. So they just gave you all three at mm -hmm. once. Yeah, I think so. I do know. I remember the three strike policy. I think we had like, maybe there were music violations or something, or maybe they just said this was a COVID thing yeah. immediate down. But I mean, eventually what we waited like two weeks, you know, the yeah, crazy part is they're still doing it. So I saw James O'Keefe tweet this yesterday that if you talk negatively on Kamala on Instagram or Facebook, it's automatically shadow banned. I hate that. Isn't that and crazy? Even, like, I feel like Meta is doing a little better. And I mean, I've seen Zuckerberg come out and like talk a little bit more free speech, a little bit more pro conservative. And I feel like I thought Meta was kind of moving in that direction, allowing conservatives. I know I have some friends there that actually have helped conservative creators like get their accounts back up mm -hmm. when they're like taken down. So mm -hmm. I think there's individuals there that mean okay. well, like unicorns. Yeah, but the people at the top are still. Okay. Let's be honest. We got work to do. Still. Yeah, the the government has infiltrated a lot of these platforms. That's why X is amazing. Yeah. Because you won't get shadow banned there. You no. can tweet whatever you want. I mean, knock want. on wood. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood. But so far, so good. I actually got to meet a bunch of people from X. First time ever because two years ago, pre-Elon, they would have never come to anything. But X was at the RNC. They oh, had wow. had representatives at the RNC in the creator suite. I think they sponsored it for a day, actually, for the conservative content creators. And the team was amazing. They nice. were so nice. They're like, if you need anything, let us know. I'm like... Really nice. Well done, Elon, turning that San Francisco-based company you, into yeah, into that. Um, speaking of X, you posted on X. This, this was hilarious. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> my city is full of low-T men. I stand by that, yeah. Where are you at? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Really? So, actually, yeah, I won't even get into the details of it, but <laughs> it's very concerning, like the actual rate of amount of straight men in Atlanta. And you just you really don't know. My wow. friends and I play this game. It's called Gay or Straight. And it's that common out there? It's pretty bad. I didn't know that. It's pretty bad, yeah. Holy crap, Atlanta. I thought that was full of like successful dudes. I did too. And I like I'm shocked cuz I it's something that they've been telling me just really over the past few months. I used to not go out much. My friends are trying to get me to go out and I'm like, "Oh, he's hot." They're like, "You know he's gay, right?" <laughs> I'm like, Damn it. You got to develop that gaydar. I'm trying. Damn. So, yeah, I need some more testosterone in Atlanta. Well, there's one in how many kids are gay now, like something crazy. It's got to be in the water. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in public school. And it's like, wow, when our parents were in school, it was like no one was gay. It's an interesting statistic, something that's probably going to be studied, but definitely needs to. Oh, it will be studied. I don't studied. know, like, is it, is it because people are just more comfortable being gay because it's more socially acceptable? Yeah. Or is there something that's, like, causing this? I would say both. I think people are more open to talk about whatever these days, but at the same time, it's too much. It's like autism, like one in thirty. Yeah, That's... everyone's autistic. Yeah. Have you been? Have you? On, there's like TikTok, and it's like autism reveal cakes. <laughs> have you seen that? And if no, it's I like haven't. a rainbow, it's like you have autism, and if it's nothing, then you have like you're just normal or with ADHD. Really? But like, yeah. So everyone's just getting diagnosed with autism. And they're like, that's wow. my problem. I'm autistic. I'm like, yeah, you're just weird. I <laughs> mean, I have it. My dad had it, but it's like when I was in school, no one else had it. But now yeah. one in 30 people Everyone have has it. it. Yeah. Like when I went to a big ass school, like 3,000 kids. I think that they're just making it like a, a wider and wider net for people. So anyone that's a little, I guess, is it neurodivergent? They just, they're like, oh, you're autistic. You'll be fine. Which is crazy. I mean, ma Maha, right? Make America healthy again? Yeah. Maha. Hopefully that can help. Maha. Is it Maha or Maha? Maha. <laughs> I don't know. But some people say it's from getting all this V words when you're... <laughs> when it you're could born because be. you get them like so many you get like yeah. 30 or something before the age of one so that's another thing i get to worry about now i'm like if i have kids do i i'm not with my kids no it, maybe a few but not a hundred it's a hundred now okay 106 well, that's, that's I a lot yeah and uh there's heavy metals in all I of know. them so that's when they do true. studies on them individually they're fine but they're putting eight in one and you're getting all mm. of that in once i'm a lot more reluctant now than Definitely. i was like in high school i'm not even just... gonna do a hospital oh you know I we gotta, maybe the the baby mama like we gotta, we gotta talk to her. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've had this conversation. <laughs> okay. I'm not just forcing her. To, <laughs> as yeah. long as long as she agrees. But you know, I have heard this thing, and I think it was Alex Clark. She had some people on a panel one time at Turning Point, and it was medical doctors, some chiropractors, and I don't remember uh, like a like a doula, like a birth nanny, and they were talking, and they were like, the United States is the worst when it comes to like 
maternal like births and how we take care of that it's like I guess the one position that they put us in like on our back with our legs up is like the most painful and the worst thing to do wow. and so what you really should do is like be kind of like on your knees like more of like a fetal position um and they say in a lot of other countries like people actually don't go to the hospital and they sure as hell don't put them on their back like that and so it's just kind of and then you know the epidural is a whole nother yeah a whole nother thing but natural births water births like staying at home and then having like a nurse, somebody on standby. It's, I'm not against it. I'm not totally opposed. Mm -hmm. But I think... Yeah, I'm we're not doing home see. either because our home is... You're supposed to be within five minutes of hospital. Yeah. So we're not. So we're doing like a natural center that's Ooh. two minutes from a hospital. See, I, would, I could do that. Yeah, do so that. in case something goes wrong, we got the hospital. I agree with that. So... I'm just doing that. Plus, it's super expensive to have a baby. In are a you home. expecting or are you just planning? No, we're getting married next year, but we're planning all this now because of raising a kid <laughs> is scary right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, Everything it's, is scary. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where it's like, should I even have kids in yeah. this in this climate? Well, we talked about that today. And I, I think about it all the time, too. But I think we just can't be scared to do something that is going to be maybe the greatest joy that we'll ever have. So. Right. Yeah, Don't having kids is massive You're be purpose. A great dad. I hope so. I, I will not send them to public school. <laughs> I, went, I went to public school. I came out okay, but but that was different. It was back in the day. Teachers I, were yeah. not pushing things on us, and it was. Do you remember back when like we we wouldn't know what our teachers were politically? I never knew. I never knew. I always wanted to know. Yeah. I never even asked. But yeah, no, you didn't ask. You didn't know. They didn't push it on you. That's how. That's how it should be. Yeah. So they're telling kids now what they are. I think so, where they just wear rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Can you figure it yeah, out? <laughs> I've seen that. Wow. Uh, if you could, uh, elections in two weeks, if you could tell Trump anything, what would you say to him? Mm -hmm. I tell him I've supported him since day one, but really, I don't have much to say. What I do want to know is more on aliens, like the ones in the space, not illegal aliens, and like... <laughs> Why don't why doesn't anyone talk about that? Mm. Like, what can you tell us about like Area Fifty One? You know. Hopefully, he releases those. I want him to. I thought he was going to on his last day in office. I really thought that would have been savage. I I thought he was going to, but there's got to be something they're not telling us, right? Like, oh yeah, it's gotta be something. He's gotta know something. Like the Bob Lazar, Joe Rogan mm -hmm. podcast talking about like reactors and stuff. They're not doing yeah. UFOs. Release those files, Trump, please. So Trump, if I <laughs> had a moment with you, just tell me about the aliens. Love it. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome.